Hey guys, Shawhead here. For those of you that are familiar with my PAT video series or have been personally taught by me through the crash courses we offer, you know just how valuable it is to use techniques that save you time. For those of you that don't know me, I've been teaching students how to ace the PAT for almost a decade. Over the years, I've developed unique approaches to every section that are not only effective, but extremely efficient. Best of all, these approaches have nothing to do with training you to become a master at mental visualization. Instead, the techniques I teach are meant to help you hone in on the correct answer both quickly and precisely. So in this video, I just want to take a couple of minutes and quickly show you guys a very useful technique that I've developed for the pattern folding section of the PAT. So to show you guys this technique, let's first bring in a dice pattern, which is extremely common on this section. Now, a lot of students will be intimidated uh, by a pattern like this because it can be tricky to visualize how the faces all come together when the pattern is folded. But let's bring in an option choice and I'll show you guys what this easy trick is all about. Uh, so this trick is going to quickly determine where the face will end up in relation to another face. So looking at this option choice, we can tell that the five, the four and the one face are all that we're asked to interpret. So therefore we can ignore half of the pattern and simply hone in on these faces. Okay. So notice how on the option choice, the five face is directly to the right of the four face. If we wanted to create the same scenario with the given pattern on the left here, we would first have to rotate the pattern 180 degrees. Once we do this, the five face uh, is directly to the right of the four face, just as it is on the option choice. Now it's clear to see that the resulting top face is clearly uh, a six face as opposed to the one face we see on the option choice. So this, this option choice is incorrect. But to get here, we had to imagine the pattern being rotated 180 degrees. Uh, this is unnecessary mental gymnastics, uh, and my goal is to reduce or outright eliminate the need to mentally rotate objects. Okay, so let's get rid of all this unnecessary analysis, and I'll finally introduce the trick I want you guys to learn. So here are the rules of the trick. Or the rules of the trick are actually pretty simple. Uh, first, we identify a face of interest. In our case, the face of interest will be the four face, but it can just as well as be the five face or any other face. Second, we identify an adjacent face. In this case, I've identified the five weight face uh, with the blue arrow. Now notice that this face is to the left of our face of interest, but the option choice shows the five face to the right of the face of interest. So this orientation shown in the option choice can therefore only be made if the pattern is first rotated 180 degrees. So at this point, I'll introduce, uh, I'll introduce the two important rules I want you guys to remember. If we ever run into a situation like this where we anticipate having to perform a 180 degree rotation, we can simply focus on our face of interest and conclude that any face directly to the left of it will actually fall to the right when it's fully rotated and folded. And any face directly below our face of interest will fall above the face once rotated and folded. So bringing it back to this example, since the five face on our pattern is to the left of the four face, we know that after a rotation, it will fall to the right of the four face as seen in the option choice. But the thing that we must now realize is that the one face, which was right above the four face will have to be below the four face since we are assuming that a rotation will be necessary in order to have the five face uh, be to the right of the four face. So since the one face is actually above the four face on the given option choice, uh, we can conclude that this option choice is incorrect. Now, I know some of you guys probably already use this technique without even knowing it. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's a pretty simple concept, but over the years, I found that a lot of students actually use their valuable time to try and mentally uh, manipulate these objects, whereas the goal should be to minimize that altogether. So like I said before, I don't want you guys to become masters of mental manipulation. The less mental gymnastics you do, the better because visualizing these figures in your mind and mentally rotating them is not only taxing, but it introduces another potential source of error. So my goal for you guys is to answer these quickly and efficiently so you can focus your valuable study time on other sections of the PAT or more broadly on other sections of the DAT. So I'll leave it at that. I hope this was valuable. And if you're interested in learning more tips and tricks that will allow you to answer questions efficiently, I highly recommend you to attend our PAT crash course where I'll go over techniques and give you insight into what goes through my mind every time I go through questions on this PAT. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.